editing components in the assembly file. So if we're editing parts and we're editing the parts that are in built in the assembly file, we want to come over to the browser bar. And so let's say I want to make a change to this plate. What I want to do is I want to come over and in the browser bar pick on that particular uh, item, that component. I want to right click and then I want to go up and say edit. Notice what happens. Up here, all the other parts turn grayish. All right. And the active part is down here in the white. You can see over here in the components and in the drawing that the active ones are dark gray and the inactive ones are kind of transparent. And that's because we have our transparent on tool on in our, um, in our uh, appearance panel. And uh, so what we want to do now is we want to make a change to this plate. So I can just um, come over here to this extrusion, right click and say edit feature. I'll make a basic change. I'm going to go to 2.0 and I'll say OK. Now, what I want to do after I've made the change is I want to go up and return. OK, so I want to go and use the return tool to switch back to the assembly. So I'll return back. Now everything's back to normal, and now I want to save the assembly. So when I go up and hit save, I get this dialog box that will pop up, and it'll ask me, do you want to save changes to the assembly file and its dependents? And, you know, I want to be able to say yes to all, to all these files. So I'll say yes to all, and I'll say OK. And then it'll update all the files in the assembly. So once again, this is for editing components in the assembly file. And these components were drawn in the assembly file, not as separate files. And so all we did was we highlighted the file we're interested in by going up to edit that separated it out, allowed us to go and edit the item. We then returned, and then we went back and saved. And it'll ask us then if we want to make save changes to those particular files. Uh, so this is editing components in the assembly file.